Hello, world. Welcome back to Golf Subpar. Colt knows Drew Stoltz. Sleaze, what a week for our man, John Rahm. Big Spain winning the 87th Masters, his second major championship, dominating fashion on Sunday. How much fun was that? Oh, my God. Uh, I feel like we're, we're celebrating like we won the damn thing. But, yeah, uh, like we say, an angry Spaniard is a dangerous Spaniard. And, man, he came out there. I'm going to be honest. A little worried after the, the four whack on the first hole to start off the thing. I was like, well, damn it. I'm going to head and curse to another one. We talked about him on here, but damn, he persevered that entire week. I mean, to come back from that, the four putt, then to get the bad end of the draw, which was so much tougher than the other side, and come through there, play the long weekend like he did in some terrible weather. And dude, he just really never gave, like, Brooks made some bogeys and John was able to make up some ground by making pars, but he would just never put himself in position to really make very many bogeys, to make any big numbers, to let Brooks catch, come back into it without him making birdies. And Brooks went, what, 22 holes, I think, stretch without making birdies. When he did start making them, it was a little bit too late in the game. And, I mean, that final round, that's that'd be about exactly how you would draw it up for a final round at a major. The only bogey he had on was nine after he pumped drive down there. And I think that approach shot was about a yard or two from being a close look for birdie. So you can't say enough good things about John Rahm and what he just did, man. Um, this could be a monstrous year for the Spaniard in the major championship circuit. Yeah, it's already been a monstrous year. Uh, fourth win continues to get better and better, which is scary. Um, back to number one player in the world. Two two majors now. You know, in the way he did it, like you mentioned, the four putt right out of the gate is almost like a wake up call. It's like, uh, oh god, let's 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 start over. I think, you know, a younger John Rahm might not have bounced back the way he did, but there he goes out. He plays the next 17 holes and nine under par to shoot 65 that first day. Just looked in full control all week. Brooks Kepka, you got to give it to him. I mean, he played awesome. You know, a lot of talk about the live guys coming in. Where are they going to perform? Well, he did. Um, it looked like the Brooks Kepka of old for three rounds. Obviously struggled quite a bit on Sunday. Um, Phil Mickelson, shout out, 52 How years old. Sunday, 65, birdied the 72nd hole. I was like, oh, my God, could this guy somehow maybe sneak into a playoff? But at the end of the day, John Rahm was just too much. I mean, other than the tee shot on 18, it was yep. uh, it was pretty damn impressive. But I'm so happy for John. Got my master's green on for him right now. Mm -hmm. Represent, but love that. Hopefully get him in studio soon uh, with the jacket. He's already brought the U.S. Open trophy in, so might as well bring the jacket and uh, let's let's talk about it. Oh, we're going to slide that thing on. I can guarantee you that. And how about this for John Rahm? Also a record I'm pretty sure may never be broken in the history of golf. If you'd say... Name the major championship that four, the major champion that four putted the opening hole and also hit a provisional on the 72nd and still won by four or more. That might not ever be done again. You know, I was talking to Justin Thomas, you know, as as John Rom was wrapping up that victory, and he's like, "Dude, this is just unreal to start off the way he did, and and the bad way. Like it was it was two and a half shots. I mean, yeah, you, you spot the field two shots right out of the gate with a four putt, and then two and a half because of the wave." Uh, just so impressive. He's so good. I mean, we play with him at home, and every single time you're just like, my God, how do you not win every time you tee it up? It's it's so impressive, and I, I don't think it's going to slow down anytime soon. I don't see it stopping. How about, I mean, JT knows better than anyone. He was right there in the mix a good bit, and then he had to play that, that second nine out in the trash weather. What did he shoot, 42? 42. Uh, coming in, I mean, just dirt nap. By the way, shout out JT. He did allow Tiger to match Freddie's consecutive cut. Uh, streak at the Masters, so tip of the cap to him. But um, man, it was it was so nasty out there. You could easily just say, "I got the shit into the wave. This isn't going to work out." But he didn't do it, and to come through and end up winning by four after all that, hell of a run. Also, Colt, what do you think about like there was so much talk going into this from most of like the mainstream golf media. Let's call it about the live guys and the tour guys and the Champions Dinner and all that. I thought everything went about as well as it could have gone. I didn't see anybody causing any commotion. Champions dinner, nothing came out of that. From everything we heard, Phil Mickelson, pretty reserved during that deal, kept to himself, didn't talk a whole lot. And there was a time on Sunday where I was like, damn, if you would have told me Phil Mickelson would be the biggest threat to the final round leader coming home, uh, I wouldn't have believed you. Yeah, um, it was, but it was just awesome to be there. The week is so special. Augusta National, um, I just got up to Hilton Head, ready for another big week here, the RBC another. Heritage designated event loaded field going to be great but man masters week just unbelievable it's so cool to watch and see how much it means to these guys when they win 
a tournament of this magnitude. I mean, this is a life changer. John Rahm, you know, money is not about the money. Just going down in history, being the fourth Spaniard to win at Augusta National, doing it on Seve's birthday. It's, it's crazy how it all worked out. Having Jose Mariola Thabal there, you know, to greet him on 18. I loved it, man. It is. Uh, it was great. And and listen, I'm a PGA Tour guy, but I did think it was cool to see the storylines up there with with one of our best in the world, you know, going up against Brooks Kepka, Phil Mickelson was there. Patrick Reed also played well. Um, Jordan Spieth made a late run. I mean, we had everything we wanted other than the weather conditions, which just sucked on Saturday and would force Tiger Woods to withdraw. Yeah, I think it actually, this is like the first one, I feel like, since the, the boiling point of the Live versus PGA Tour stuff, I feel like it's kind of simmered now. But, like, I feel like it almost adds a little bit of a lure to the majors because you have the Live versus PGA Tour dynamic. It's like, yeah, these are just the best golfers in the world. It's like Harold Varner says, like, we're not Space Jam. They didn't suck all our talent off us. There's still some guys over there that can play really, really good golf, and it kind of almost adds a little underlying storyline to these tournaments where you do have a guy like Brooks. I mean, he was in full control of that thing. Didn't know how John Rahm would handle going back out there and playing in the terrible weather. Um, but I thought all the players handled it well. I don't think anyone said anything or, you know, made any comments. Jim Nance got a nice little pop in there, though, about the CW. CW. That was a shout out to Jimmy. Has not lost it one bit on the CW. You could find Brooks Koepka on the CW of uh, the crosswalk. I was like, oh, that's probably the one guy in the world that can get away with that at the uh, on the Masters broadcast. But, dude, all in all, I hope. I hope we stop talking about the Live versus PJ Tour stuff. I know the players are sick of talking about it. They're sick of answering the questions. I mean, shit, Rory and Brooks went out and played a practice round together. I didn't have that going on either leading into the week. So I think hopefully most of it's put to bed. There's really good golfers that play everywhere. And I, in my opinion, the best one won at, at Augusta National. Yeah, he did. And I heard nothing. You know, you see social media. A lot of people are like, they're not covering the Live players fairly. They're not showing. That's such bullshit. Obviously, Brooks was in the final pairing. We showed every single shot he hit. Um, I was doing the featured group channel. One of those featured groups was Phil Mickelson and Jordan Spieth. I mean, there was no there was no animosity. There was nothing inappropriate about what went on all week. It was the Masters. It was front. It was center stage. And the best player in the world won. And um, it was a treat to be there. Can't wait to get back next year. Um, hopefully, we can dodge the weather next year. We need a little better because that, that Saturday was just ridiculous. I, they played a lot longer than I thought they would. If you could dodge a wrench, you could dodge a ball. And if you could dodge some weather, even better. By the way, that featured group with Phil and Jordan, that was all-time great. That was like vintage golf from both of them. <laughs> Jordan Speed, what did Jordan make? Nine tweets the last day? Uh, Something they best, crazy. They best balled like a 58 or some wild shit like that. Uh, those two, like pretty kind of pretty comparable in the way they get around a golf course. That was uh, that was fun to watch, man. But the week week as a whole – Hell of a week. Hell of a fun time down there in Augusta. Thank you to all the listeners that came out and said what's up, and uh, we're ready to get back at it. I mentioned my Green Masters hoodie in honor of John Rahm from our friends over at Roback. The best hoodies on the planet. These guys are everywhere, and they have more than just hoodies. They got polos. They got Q-zips. They got it all, and we're going to give you a great deal. You can use code SUB on Roback.com for a generous 20% off your first order. That's spelled R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com, and you get 20% off all polos, hoodies, Q-zips with code SUB, S-U-B. Make sure to check out their print polos. They will have you feeling good all year round. And I tell you, who got us feeling good, buddy? Our guest mm. this week. Oh. I mean, bringing in three bottles of wine for us, <laughs> sat down, poured a little vino, just had a time with our man Jerry Kelly. To all of our younger guests that come on, this is a good way to ingratiate yourself to the host is show up with three bottles of vino and just crack them open or just have a good time. You know what I mean? The older generation gets it. And Jerry Kelly, man, the guy can go. He's got some stories. We had a hell of a time talking to him. All right. Here he is. Jerry Kelly on Golf Subpar. Okay. Our uh, guest here tonight has been golfing his ball very well for a long time. He's got three PGA Tour wins. 11 wins with two majors and counting on the Champions Tour. Recently became what would I call it, the most experienced player to ever play the weekend at the Players, Jerry Kelly. That and was, he brought wine. That was very was, respectful. Yeah, I don't want to, like, most experienced. That was. That's a, that's a good way to put it. I, I, I saw Krusty online today. I saw a bunch of, bunch of different ones. Yeah. Krusty? <laughs> You're not Krusty. Krusty is guy. Game. Game. By the way, you beat a lot of people. <laughs> let's, just get, let's, get, let's just get right to that. Good and question to ask. First off, yeah. I'm not the biggest wine guy. Or rosé, for that matter, but for Jerry Kelly, 
I, I just I just wanted to get Colt drinking a rosé. That's and then, why I and brought then, it. I'll be honest, it's damn good. <laughs> it's Sorry. good to still chance. Here's Cheers, boys. Yeah. Cheers, yeah. boys. Cheers, and boys. one of our only guests to ever bring us <laughs> booze. You're a hell of a man. Let's let's tackle the hard hitting questions here early. You're one of the most competitive people I think anyone will ever meet. Um, I know you still believe you can go out there and, and slap it around with the young fellas, but does it amaze you like how crazy the game of golf is nowadays with how far these young kids are hitting it? I was shocked. I mean, I've, I've, I've played the Sony every year and the Sony is one of those great equalizer courses as well, but it's short and you don't really get the full effect. Okay. I got the full effect last week and I, I played with Wyndham Clark and, oh, and yeah. there you go. Dylan Fratelli, Fratelli. Both can smash. I mean, both can smash. And you know, Eric and I were talking and we we're like, these guys aren't even known to be the longest. But I, I mean, there were multiple times where they were right next to each other. And I go to E, I go, dude, I can't get a sandwich to him right now. <laughs> I can't. So, I mean, th there's a solid 80. You know, I, I told the guys it, it averaged 60 yards longer. Mm -hmm. Averaged. Sometimes there were 100. <laughs> Sometimes there were 20. Yeah. Uh, when they... The good thing is on that golf course, they will lay up with irons and shorter than driver. And I will absolutely hit driver everywhere. So I kind of come close to him sometimes. Let me ask you this, because obviously the money nowadays is crazy. But the way you play golf, are you happy you were in the era you were? Or are, I should say. You're not done yet. PGA Tour era. Yeah, PGA Tour era. I mean, yeah, I... I am 1,000%. I think I could go back an era <laughs> and be even happier. Uh, you know, there was a different sort of talent, a different sort of, uh, I don't know, what do you, what do you call it? Uh, there's a, the way that the balls were. I mean, the rubber band wrapped a lot of balls. These guys would explode how many balls per round. I yeah. mean, you, you, you couldn't hit them that hard. And uh, Dan Pohl was about the longest when I was out. And I remember picking up his driver. I mean, that was, it was a telephone pole. It was a big, heavy steel thing. It had to be about 170, 190 grams. I mean, that we, would, we didn't even put it in grams back then. It was in pounds. <laughs> Uh, the thing was a sledgehammer. It was huge. And for him to be able to swing that thing that fast, uh, it, it would be really cool to just put old equipment, new equipment and old guys and old equipment and new guys yeah. and just, and just see that, well, that that's the argument. It would be fun to just see a tournament. Like, yeah. all right, this is a lot of persimmon. Go get it. I know it's going to be different. It's not specked out every way, but like, that's the way it was back then. Like, oh, I hooked my three wood. Like there wasn't, oh, move the weighting or change the, the you know, adjust this. It was like that draws everything else fades. <laughs> just go give it to him and see it one time. It'd be fun to watch. But I mean, that's, that's what you got too. I mean, you didn't go in the trailer and say, you know, hey, can you uh, whip me up another driver here? I mean, yeah. what, you yeah, came you to the golf, face? what you came to the golf course with was what you had. I mean, even the lofts and lies were pretty archaic back then. So. Torino Tr told me, I mean, obviously that's going way back, but Torino Tr told me he used to use the, the curb, sidewalk of the, the curb a lot, and go over there with his putter or wedge or whatever and just bang it whichever direction he thought he needed, more upright, more flat, change some loft. I'm like, things have changed a little bit. Yeah, all the time. No. I would love to see, because obviously nowadays – the kids are taught to hit, you know, way up and way right on the driver if you're right-handed. You do that with the old ball and the old equipment. Oh boy, yeah, <laughs> it could be an adventure. Yeah, I, I mean, you didn't have enough room on that face to actually go high right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was almost that whiff, and you'd see those old persimmon heads with that little notch on the top, mm -hmm. top right of the face. It was kind of fun. And I think guys like if, if say we had this talk earlier today, if technology stopped evolving in '97, it was like that was it. Boom, Tiger was there. Right, he was only he was still playing steel shafted driver, all that stuff. I would argue that like guys like Tiger, the top tier guys, would have wanted an even higher clip because I think the new technology makes it easier for guys that don't hit the middle of the face every single time. One thousand percent. Yeah, I I fully agree with that. that. That's what I was saying. It's just a it's a different talent that there is now. Hey, the talent that these guys have now to move their bodies and to create the speed and to create the consistency. 
Uh, you know, and you see the top players are are still bombing it out there. They're learning how to do that, but those are the guys that have the mind as well. Uh, there was a much more level playing field in in length, and it the difference was more the mental side and the the controllability. The hands had to be a little different. Not the not the entire body, but just the hands. There was there was a moment down there that you had to very precisely get, mm -hmm. and it uh, you wouldn't be able to just you know close the back of that left wrist and and turn through as much as the guys do now because you didn't know if that ball was <laughs> actually weighted at the bottom. You know the mud balls of today. Those were the balls of yesterday. They were they were never round and they were never equally weighted. I mean, that's you, crazy. You never knew what you were going to get. I mean, it's a liquid filled ball. So, yeah. I mean, it was it was kind of crazy. Bryson would have figured it out. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm <laughs> yeah, sure. get those on a scale. No, level we used out. to we used to put all the balls that we got in a bathtub with Epsom salt. I've heard this. And you mark once they settle, you put a mark on the top of every single ball. And then you just roll them all over the place. The balls that came up without the mark straight up again, those are the ones you played in the tournament. Because they were round. Because they were round. Yeah. They were weighted correctly. But it was amazing how many times that little dot came up absolutely dead square straight up and down. When was What time frame was this? When was the last time you remember doing that? It was definitely 90s. 90s? Yeah. Totally. Like still, and I guess, yeah, because I guess what, the, the Pro V, that kind of like, that's the first one that like changed the whole, what was that? The or, Professional did. Or that professional, was a, that I remember was 2000, those. Wasn't that it? was like gold having a sleeve of professionals and they were gold sleeves. But I remember yeah. when I got my like, I was like, oh my God, I can't play with these. These are only my putting balls. You know, <laughs> I don't want to mess them up. <laughs> totally. <laughs> putting balls. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I only putt with them. I don't <laughs> like, you slide those non round ones into your opponent's bag. Yeah. You're like, here, you, 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 you need a professional? Here you go, bud. Here you go. Um, we mentioned Tiger. I mean, you got to see that up close and personal. Take us through some of your favorite Tiger stories, playing with him, playing against him. Uh, maybe what blew you away, if we have enough time for all that. Uh, Our players, man, I it it's just amazing. I mean, I I was such a competitor, wanting to beat him so bad, uh, basically because everybody in the media kept on saying. You know, why are you guys so afraid of him? Why does he intimidate you so much? He he didn't intimidate us. Well, he didn't intimidate me, but he played so flawlessly. And even hitting the ball offline. And, but scorecard, he played so flawlessly that you knew you had to do something special, something outside of your comfort zone to actually be able to compete with the guy. Because stroke for stroke, I, I'm sorry, he was going to take me down. Mm -hmm. So I had to do something special. Uh, as my wife reminds me very consistently, in 2001, when I was leading the Players' Championship and I had the press conference, I was feeling pretty good about myself, apparently. I don't remember this press conference, but she does vividly. <laughs> and uh, Saturday night, I... I happen to say, you know, Tiger's going to have to do something pretty special to beat me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Good Don't. go. Don't. Shut up, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was a bad moment of mine, apparently. <laughs> yeah, hey, at least you had the confidence. <laughs> no, but I got, it, yeah, it, it, it was solid. I, I came out, and uh, we actually were tied through nine holes, and it went to Monday. Yeah, that's tough. That was awful. That's tough. That was a tough one. So... Monday I came out, and I'm, I'm still feeling pretty good at that point. And uh, I hooked my drive into the left bunker on, on 10, sawgrass. He knocks, you know, iron down the middle past where my driver would have been on the left. I go to the left of that palm tree in between yeah, yeah. a couple of them, bend it right to the edge where it's going to go down. I mean, another two feet, that thing goes down right by the hole, stays up top. I'm feeling pretty good. Looking at him over there. He stuffs it to about six inches. And you could just see at that point. Uh, there was definitely no talking 
between us. It was just he's he's bombing out there and he is getting the job done. But uh, I I remember him getting lucky a few times. <laughs> just yeah, few. he had crazy so luck. I, I, crazy I do remember luck that. over his career. That was the better than most year, it's, wasn't it? Yeah, that was on Saturday. Yeah, to, that had to, to be get, like a moment where you just have to watch and be like, I'm witnessing. This is gonna live for a long time. I I was watching that across the fairway, and that was to get him into the final group mm -hmm. on Sunday. Go away! Yeah, damn it! Leave that me was, alone. Uh, but uh, who knows? Would I have played as well if he wasn't in the final group? Did I play better because he was there? But the big thing about playing with Tiger is is again not the intimidation factor of him, but the circus that comes with playing with Tiger. Uh, he is so good at coming up to a tee when he's up and he'll just sit there and play with his glove, look in his bag, yeah, you know, talk to his caddy, do whatever, wait for all these guys to just file in T T T. Yeah. You know, they're just lined up getting pictures, doing everything. And he knows when they get set, he comes out, starts his routine, gets it done. Me, when it's my turn, I get up there. I'm like, all right, stick the tee on the ground. They're moving all stop. over the place. <laughs> you know, yeah, you got to stop care. every single one of them. And now I'm out of my element. I'm gone mm -hmm. at that point. But he is so good with that patience with the circus. That's He's the only one tough. used to. He's the only one that lives that every week every in, week out for forever. It's, it's a different experience for everyone else. That's why the scoring average paired with Tiger for a long time was like, you know, crazy high compared to not with tiger yeah. i walked with him for the first time uh at la and i'd never been inside the ropes in the same group as him i'd been in front of him i've been behind him and i was just like holy shit i yeah. mean this is it's a lot yeah. like you feel bad like he wasn't he was playing with uh tyrell hatton and somebody else on sunday and i mean the second he taps in boom there's ten thousand people gone and gone. you're over here and tyrell hatton's over here like tyrell had to be going stand nuts. still i'm trying to butt <laughs> over here too watch me <laughs> they don't he get had a to shit. Be going nuts he, <laughs> he had... was great he was funny that day but he actually played decent but it is it's a totally like you go out there i i said this we were he started on the back nine on saturday at riff he was in made the cut on the number we get to number 16 and the leaders were on five the leaders were max homa john rom and keith mitchell so Max Oman, John Rahm, two of the biggest stars in the game right now. There was three times as many people around 16 green watching Tiger in 60th place as there were the lead group with big names. Yeah. It's that's just that's how that's it is. his life. Last Tiger question, at least for me. All right, so you play with him in that deal. You're head-to-head, -head, your competitors. That was in a time, too, when, like, I feel like Tiger didn't let a lot of people close at nope. that point, right? I feel like he's opened up a little bit later. He's kind of Justin Thomas being the main guy. But, like, he's a little more accessible, I guess to people than he was back then. Then you go and play on the President's Cup team with him. Even though he's a competitor typically, now he's your teammate. Is it possible just to not kind of watch him on that team? Like, how does he do? Now I get a, now I get to look at it. Now I get to watch it. Absolutely. No, you're, you're watching it when you're playing with him anyway. Uh, I mean, but the glimpses on the on the other side, listening to him talk to some of the other players that, that he felt were probably a little more equal. <laughs> Some of those conversations were really, were really fun to listen to. I, I didn't have, you know, those heart to hearts with him. I would have loved to. And uh, when he comes out on the Champions Tour, I am, I am gonna try and sit him down. Do you think, <laughs> you think he's getting out there? Nick Jack says he's playing, and I just that that would shock me. Why would it shock you? Just because of the way the the current situation he's in right now. I mean, what, and I just don't able? think Tiger will ride in a cart. I think he, he has too much pride to ride in a cart. I think he's most definitely going to ride in a cart. If anybody's yeah. deserved to ride in a cart oh, at yeah. that stage, I, it is it is that man right hey, there. Man, we I give wish him a he, hovercraft right now if he wanted to, but he ain't going to take it. You I know wish he I mean? could no, do he, it right Just go across the lake. He, he won't on the PGA Tour yeah. because the records have been set without carts. Okay. And That's he fair. doesn't want any record to be tarnished by anything. The records on the PGA Tour champions have carts involved. They always have. Mm -hmm. So it is not going to bother him in the least to take that and think that, oh, it's it, it, there's going to be an asterisk. There's no asterisk. Well, if and when he does play out there, I mean, that's, that's a game changer for that tour. I, I mean, it's it, it's got to be. Yeah, the tour is uh, great. Do other already. people, on, like the other yeah, your buddies on the champions tour, they, does everyone feel like Tiger will be there? Eventually, it, like, he'll go play? I, I do feel like uh, 
he's dropped enough of those little hints mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that that yeah now he, you know he's he's not gonna go out there and play a full schedule <laughs> right right because he's got a cart but majors hey play a couple majors yeah you know you know the the open championship the u.s senior open the senior pga those are those are some fun events uh it's it's really a great time and plus you got okay senior players might be at firestone yeah he's That's pretty okay. good, he's pretty good that there. might that might be a little draw for him. i used yeah. to think you would probably want him to stay away that one yeah yeah no, i would i would absolutely love the chance i i i want him to play every single week that i'm playing no mm-hmm. i mean to to actually win against him would make any win that much better. He's the only guy I can say that about, but it's totally true. Uh, I mean, my whole career, we're rookies the same year, so he's destroyed me my whole career. <laughs> well, you're not the only one. <laughs> I used to think he wouldn't play the Champions Tour, but now I'm like, okay, look at all he's gone through. And like, it would have been so easy to pack it in. Like, that's it, dude, I don't have it in me to get back out there and go through all this just to try to play. But he's done it, and he's done it time and time again. Yeah. Now it's like, okay, you've kind of gone through it, assuming there's no more crazy injuries. It's like, he doesn't sit still well. What's he going to just, oh, I'm 50, I'm done playing, maybe go trot around a few PGA Tour events? It's almost like he has to have something to, to fuel him, to get ready for. It'd be interesting. You, you guys should check out you know, a Champions Tour event at some point because it is the purest form in golf – of competition between pros because most of the guys have made their living they've they've done well they still have the sponsorship all that kind of stuff they're not playing for the money i mean the guys on the pga tour absolutely playing for the money they're playing for the titles but hey there's a reason this thing jumped up so high i mean they're they're definitely playing for money as well uh solidify their future but Champions Tour, there's, there's not enough money to get a lot of these guys who have done so well in their career that excited about playing golf for what we're playing for. Hey, it's still more than what I played for as a rookie on tour, so I'm, I'm ecstatic. I love it. But that is competition. Well, you get the big cat yeah, out there. Those purse point. might... Might jump up a little uh, bit. That would it trickle down economics would be beautiful to have it come down. But uh, <laughs> trust me, it's, I want to talk because you had two top tens in majors, uh, 2007 Masters and the U.S. Open. I, I want to talk about the 2007 Masters because yeah. it's one of those ones where honestly, because the weather was so bad, it set up really well for you. That's yeah. when Zach Johnson won. He laid up on all the par fives. You were two back going into the weekend. Uh, take us through what it's like. What it was like you played a number of Masters, but that one in particular, like you had a chance going into the weekend. End up finishing T5. I had a chance on Sunday. It still burns me to this day. Uh, the Eagle chances on, I, I made it on 13, but I missed it on 15. Had a close on 17. Good up and down on 16. But uh, there were there were so many if ands, or buts on that. And you can say that every single week. We all can. But when it's the Masters, yeah. Yeah, you know, you think about those at night. Sometimes. I mean, you had a chance on Sunday, and you shot seventy-eight on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what's yeah. crazy. That that year it was. It was I nasty. believe I was uh, just below the scoring average, though. Really? <laughs> I, was, I just I just pulled it up. I think um, I made up spots on Saturday. Yeah, you ended up seventy-eight. Losing, move up the board. I think I moved up. The I board. like that. That's my kind. And of And then you shot seventy on Sunday. You lost by three shots to Zach Johnson, who won by two. Yeah. That's just that's wild. I mean, it was it it, it was right there. It was I I could. I could feel it. I could sense it. I felt like there was that chance. He was behind me, so he had uh, more birdies to make on the par fives, but I knew he was laying up too. So it was, I, I went for both of them and knocked them both within 15 feet. So on the par fives. Is, was yeah. there a major that you felt like represented your best opportunity? Like I would, you're That'd be a Augusta. straight driver, Augusta. Definitely Augusta. I would have said maybe a USO, like the way, I mean, you're. No, it was always, it was always too long though. It was always too long, and I'm way too aggressive. Uh, at Augusta, you have to be aggressive because uh, aggressive to your spots because there's five square feet to hit the ball to have it end up being close to the hole. If you hit that, you got a chance of making it on a lot of holes, not just getting it close, but the way it 
comes back off of hills and funnels into these little spots where they put the pins so geniusly. I mean, it's it's a really fun. That's why the backside at the Masters is the most fun to watch. No, and yeah. we, on TV, you see that, and you just, like, as a viewer, you know, like, okay, they're going to use this slope over here. They're going to hit it here and do this. But until you've been there in person, like, you don't appreciate how good these guys are with their irons because those sm- those spots, like number seven as a whole, we see guys feed it in there close to all the time. Yeah. And the fr- I never was there as a player. The first year I went there as broadcasting, I went out and walked the golf course, and I got to seven. I'm like, are you kidding me? That green, you have to land at the size of this table right here. Yeah. It's so, the, the front left on number one hey. is so tiny. So uh, number five is the one that gets yeah. me every single year. I mean, there is a little, that's about three square feet. <laughs> in three, four different locations just to get at each of those pins. But the the genius of the design of that course is that if you hit a shot and and you land it where you want to, you will be rewarded. And you can be rewarded by making an iron shot, I think there almost more than anywhere else on the planet. And, you know, if they built Augusta today, uh, they'd probably laugh you out of the place. But I don't think anybody's been able to duplicate or replicate the way that you can, I, I don't know, make it so difficult yet if you hit the great shot so easy. I, there's a genius behind that golf course that I, I don't think anybody has really figured out the puzzle. Like, yeah, think, it looks like there's so many slopes. Like, oh, all you got to do is hit it off that slope and it funnels to the hole. Like, it's yeah. easy, dude. Just throw it in there like it's like bumper pool, you know, yeah. or bumper yeah. bowling or whatever. I'm like, dude, that area that you got to hit to make it do that it's and if you miss that slope so, then you can't get it you the next one close. are completely gone but like one mm. thing one hole that i feel like i mean it obviously gets a, appreciated because there's so much action but 15 okay yep. which they've they've lengthened and raised the hill so last year was the first year i believe we had zero eagles the entire tournament because really? more of the field was laying up than ever before uh. but when you do have to lay up there people don't realize how hard that wedge shot is downhill lie above your feet to a green that borderline runs really hard right to left and is so shallow. I false front. I I could not stand that that layup. I had to push it way right for the left pin, and I'm like, oh good, I'm in the first cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, it, and then if it's if it's in the front right, I mean, what do you do? You can't put it left. You don't want to put it straight on. You don't want a full one in there. I you just uh, it goads you to go for it. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, that is probably, I mean, that's a good call. That That's probably the toughest third shot. Well, you got 14 at Pebble. That one's pretty close to it. So, yeah. There's no water there. It's least. softened yeah. up. Yeah, that's, that, that's true. But I want to get your thoughts. I mean, 56 years mm-hmm. old, uh, the money is just insane. These guaranteed contracts for guys going over oh, to man. live. Give me Jerry Kelly's thoughts on the live tour. As you pour another I think fine glass. Good, so yeah, we need a little bit of the sacrament for this Yeah, we got to pour a little bit of the old Kenzo <laughs> Rindo <laughs> on this one Let's right here. Let's figure it out now. <laughs> uh, yeah, cheers, boys. Here's cheers. See you again. Cheers uh, again. God yeah, that's a, it's a good talk on Liv. <laughs> I, uh, I love the fact that they're, that they're playing the majors. I, I think that's great. Uh, that's not a part of the PGA Tour umbrella. I don't think there needs to be that kind of collusion between the organizations. Uh, keep them separate. That's good. Uh, PGA Tour is a membership organization. So, yeah, it was tough that they weren't able to play in the players, but I fully back that decision. Uh, but the majors, yeah, yeah I think 1,000%. They, they Agreed. qualified for it. I think they should be able to play. I do, too. They're majors. You know, they don't become, they're not majors the people anymore that they don't com- have the guys that are yeah. qualified for, the best yeah. in the world. The people that complained about them and the players, I'm like, it's the PGA Tour's flagship event. If there's one event they would never <laughs> yeah. let them play in, it's the players. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So let, let's just go back. You're in the prime of your career on the PGA Tour. Live comes about. You get offered a massive number. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, Jerry. Yeah, I mean, what do you think? I I never would have been a massive guy, but uh, but you know, I mean, you, they took a lot of guys that aren't massive, and they gave them a lot of money. Matt, you've been massive enough. Yeah, but uh, you were 18th in the world at one point, I believe. Yeah, that and pays. you've you've got to be pretty good at doing your math, uh, you know, and not understanding the 
champions tour. I mean, it was a senior tour when I was looking forward to it. And by the time I hit 42, I was trying to just amass the rest, the rest of the way through. So I was actually going to be able to play out here. Uh, so I did my math in that kind of circumstance. Uh, you have to look at what you could make for the rest of your career, what you could make for 10, 15 years out there. You look at retirement. I don't, I don't think, uh, you know, I've always done all my own finances. Uh, so it, it helps me to be able to spin those numbers. And mm -hmm. I can look at some of these guys and go, it eh, might've been a bad move. Yeah. You know, some of them, ah, good on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of injuries, uh, you know, you've yeah, got, there's that. you've got to, it, no, in, injuries are, are real things. I mean, Hey, nobody wants to be out as long as it takes to actually start getting your insurance. And, uh, it's not as, much as it used to be in the Anthony Kim days either. So, uh, no, there's, there's some real math in there and there's some real thoughts of taking care of your family. Uh, you know, for the guys who aren't legacy players, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I harbor no ill will in that scenario. Uh, I just, I, I wish you know, if, if agents were getting a piece of it and things like that, I, I, I hope they got good advice. Uh, I hope they really understood the ramifications and also the potential that is actually there on the PGA tour, which is, which is huge. There is, if, especially if now, I mean, after the kind of reaction to it, it was, now it's like damn near apples to apples. I mean, it was huge. Uh, even, even for me back in the day but now it's it's ridiculous and you've you've still got history on your side that that is a a beautiful thing uh to be able to chase you know the palmers the nicholases the tigers to be able to chase those records and and achieve them i mean that that's a that's a special thing your commissioner commissioner kelly uh, are you allowing the live guys back at some point if they decide they want to come back to the PGA tour? I, I think it, I think legally you have to number one. I, I, I don't know if that's the case, but in my mind, uh, so you, you throw a, you throw a time limit on that suspension. He's, he's already kind of made it a year. So there's your year suspension after the last event that you play. And then you come back. The, the question is, are they able to retain their career money? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, the way you come back is guys who don't have any other avenues. I mean, Dustin's won 20 times. Mm -hmm. He's got a suspension comeback. Uh, Phil, uh, you know, that's, that's the other side of these guys leaving that, you know, following the big guys that, may have avenues back that they don't. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this just on the other side of that. Q school is going to be interesting, yeah. though. <laughs> that would be a hell of a yeah. Q school. <laughs> but, but you've got, you know, the numbers are whatever they are. Dustin Johnson gets $150 million. Bryson DeChambeau gets 125 Brooks gets 125 How are, if you're, if you're Jordan Spieth, Justin Thomas, John Rahm, who has turned down similar numbers, what are you going to say if they're like all of a sudden now, okay, these guys are allowed to come back. So they go, they got to go away for a couple of years and make all that guaranteed money. And now they're back playing in the same events. I am where I said no to that. And I stayed loyal to the PGA tour. I, that's a tough one. I mean, it I really is. I, I heard there is a, you know, some sort of monetary give back yeah. situation. I, but where would that go to the pension fund? Exactly. I, you know, I mean, what what can be done in that instance uh so i mean do you make it a, a longer period of time for the suspension uh i i'm not sure how that will work but those guys that that were loyal there has to be some sort of mm -hmm. i i don't know it's, i think you gave it a little reach around I'm, I'm I'm sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah break it all up to these guys that all said no but i got uh, I have a hard time. I'm with I, legality aside. I don't know what the rules are on that. If they're legally say, no, you can never play on this tour ever again. But right now, today, 
Bryson, Brooks, DJ, name it all said, this sucks. This isn't what I thought. I'm willing to give back prorated share, whatever they paid me to come over here. I want back on the PGA Tour. I have a hard time believing they would say, nope, we don't want, you're not welcome back. Stars. And then, that's the opinion of the sleaze. And, yeah. and I, sometimes people think we sound alike. I really, I really do think, I don't think you'd have a hard time saying no. The state of the PGA Tour is very healthy. Yes. We don't need them. In any way, shape, or form, we don't need them. Uh, there's, there's an avenue of, uh, you know, white hat, black hat, and, you know, they, they duke it out in a Ryder Cup situation when, when things happen. But, I, you know, honestly, I'd be, I'd be su surprised if they're around long enough for that to come to fruition. Yeah, I don't think PJ Tour would even give that platform to them either. Like, grant them that legitimacy True. to be like, like, yeah, you're on the same playing field as us. You're not. It's more True. just like you guys go play your stuff. Ours is what my, like that's my Total, take on it. Yeah, I, I, I don't think they'd ever open that door. Even though I think fans would love it. Completely changed my mind on that one. <laughs> oh, that would never that's happen. Terrifying. <laughs> um, Sultan, let's talk about an event that's very special to you because I know you know out there you've won eleven times, two majors, but event just happened just a couple weeks ago out there on the PJ Tour Champions Color Guard. Color Guard Classic down in Tucson. You're the tournament host. Yeah. First off, why do you is this tournament so special to you? And uh, what what all like what are all the great things that happened that week? So, the way this whole thing came about is I'm friends with the CEO of Exact Sciences who makes Color Guard, Kevin Conroy, and we just happened to be on a flight together. I'm like, where are you going? He's like, I'm going to one of my relatives funeral and just died from colon cancer and i'm like wait a second you're the ceo and you still have somebody in your family dying from colon cancer i mean we need to do something about this so i'm like i'm gonna throw it on my on my collar or whatever uh, let's just get the word out and uh next thing you know there's this tournament in tucson that needs a sponsor and uh, I come to him and say, hey, you want to make this thing big? Let's let's do this. And he was absolutely all in. And it's right at the beginning of Colon Cancer Awareness Month in March, which is such a great platform. Mm -hmm. And we've got all these Colon Cancer Coalition, uh, the advocates, the patients, the survivors, and basically an advocates what we're trying to do is make every single person a survivor you know uh i lost a great friend of mine uh robbie andringa we grew up together playing hockey together he was two years younger than me and he was always on my team so you know he was he was always better he won a national championship with U uw wisconsin and he was 48 years old and contracted stage four colon cancer. And at that time, the age was 50. Now it's dropped down to 45. So, so when I you said, should get checked. So I said at 45, mm -hmm. you know, if you hand those hats out to anybody 45 and older and, and you make sure that the people get checked because the instances now of colon cancer in people from 30 to 40 is growing at an alarming rate and nine out of ten people survive early detection one out of ten survive late detection so uh, just getting this word out at this tournament and it's turned into such a spike you know in internet searches and all that kind of stuff uh it has been incredible and we started with uh with one group the first year and we had about, I don't know, I had 50 groups and over 200 survivors that were that were there this year. And uh, it's it's become such a, I don't know, get cheesy, such a beacon of hope. Uh, it, you know, that all these people, I, I hear it every single week. You know, and I hear the tough tales every single week from people. I hear that. Thank you for doing this because you know it saved my brother's life. You know, there's so many different things, and I, I, 
I, just, I got the chills right there thinking. I mean, people are saying that to me because of a golf tournament. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy. I know everyone, y'all wear blue ribbons. You kind of all play for yeah. somebody. Like your good friend Steve Stricker this year. Yeah. For those in the golf world, Steve DiMeglio is yeah. going through it right now. Great writer for USA Today. Yeah. Um, he's going through it. I mean, it's it's a scary disease, but what y'all are doing is just awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, those those ribbons, the way the guys have gotten behind that movement, uh, that is really touching for me to see. Uh, you know, they they get a plaque with a person's name on it, and they, they write them a great note. They do a video message to them. They get in contact with them. Sometimes they're there, and they get to walk with them. Uh, it, it is such a personal connection, and it it's so above and beyond what normal PGA tour pros do at a tournament. And they've taken it on as like this tournament that is so much more than just a golf mm -hmm. tournament, that it's, that it's really a mission that it's a, it's a drive to get people to know you got to get screened early. And it, it's really saving a lot of people. And I think it's, it's crazy how much, uh, I don't know. I want. I, I want to say how much fun it is to see because there's still so much heartbreak out there, mm -hmm. and that is needless. I mean, it's there's 60 million people under screened right now. 60 million. That's crazy. They've screened over 10 million, but I mean, there's such a long way to go. So, I mean, I don't. I don't want people to lose friends. Like I've lost friends. I don't want you guys yeah. to die. I don't want, you know, and I mean, it's dark to say, but this is the kind of conversation nobody wanted to talk about colon cancer because of where it is. But it's also cancer. I mean, it's a number two killer in the entire country between men and women. It's people think of heart and breast and lung and all this. No, it's, it's colon cancer. Yeah. And it's For, so preventable. Yeah. It's crazy. I know you're go get screened. Yeah, I know we got the message to everyone. 40, what is it? 45? Once 40, 45, go once get you checked. Hit 40, unless you have family history, if you have family history of colon cancer, uh, I think it is 10 years younger than when it was detected in the person in your family. So, you know, if your father had it at 44 or 45, hopefully he's still with you. But you can get checked at 35. Yeah. I, I mean, it's it's really, really important to understand that family history. Uh, I, I looked into mine afterwards, and, and we didn't have any in ours. Uh, so I'm able to do the Coligar just every three years and feel very safe about my future at that point. But uh, that's, that's really all it takes. But... Uh, yeah, your doctor can do it. I mean, your RN can do it now. Mm -hmm. Teladoc can do it now. Yeah. I mean, there's absolutely no excuse. You can well, never leave a, your couch and take care of it. You've done a great job yeah. as like spokesman, ambassador, whatever the proper terminology is for that, but bringing awareness. Anyway. I know you're very passionate about it. Yeah, I got to bring one more thing. Okay. Did you bring. guys see the SNL skit? I did not, no. What, this this past week? Come on. I'm normally out on Who Saturday night. Who is the host? Night. Kelsey? Woody Harrelson. Oh, I saw the monologue. Two weeks ago. Yeah, we don't we don't want to talk about the monologue. <laughs> yeah. Can you can you bring it up? Yeah, you want to Come on, bring uh, it up. Yeah, we'll fire yeah it up. we can do it. I'll get bring it, right it up. here. I want you guys. Let's I take want, a little break here for a second while Slee's yeah, yeah. uh, We're gonna that. have to we're gonna have to watch SNL here for a second. Culligard. So they had no idea about you that. Like no. It. No clue. Great advertisement for them. <laughs> it's incredible. I mean get it out. Free marketing. Get it out. Any way you can with that, but that is. Please that. turn that computer off. There's no telling what might pop up now. <laughs> Do not look at my history. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. Woody Harrelson, <laughs> unleash. Um, there's no way I'll ever see anything about Cole Guard ever again and not think of that. For the record, no question. So it worked. Yeah. It worked uh, one thousand percent. And, yeah, Daddy. And I, and I just <laughs> make you feel like a real man. I definitely in the interviews for the uh, Players Championship. I'm gonna stick I, around. I might have mentioned I'm gonna unleash it on the first <laughs> yeah. team. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I like that. Well, let's unleash as much as possible. Should we unleash the emergency nine? Of course. All right, of course. These are gonna be nine fun ones.
For, before we get to it, is it because we don't really go over things before we do this? Do you have anything about Aaron Rodgers in there? Do you want to talk about it? Before? Yes, I do. Okay, we'll save it then. Okay, we'll get okay. to it there. We're All right, we ask need this, everything broken down. We ask this to everyone. Okay, you can be anyone in the history of life for a day, dead, alive, whatever you want to be. You get to walk in their shoes for a day. Who would it be? I go Jimmy Buffett. Oh, oh God, yeah, that's life of all time. It's good. I've said that a lot. I'm like, no one wants no one wants you to write a new song. Play all the shit you wrote a hundred years ago, and just go to exotic locations and sing the same shit over and over and get paid yeah. a bazillion. I might be a parrot head. Yep. God. See, I like that. That's like I haven't seen. Have you seen him in concert? <laughs> Probably about 20, times. 30 times. Yeah, I haven't He's, been. Want to see him? See, it's like gotta get it's like Garth him. Brooks when he comes out with a new song, he'll go out in his concerts and be like. I know y'all aren't here to hear this, but we're just going to play one of the new ones and yeah. we're going to get to all the old stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because like, that's what we want to see. Pit. Most people like write some new stuff. For, <laughs> no, them, for no. some reason, there's a few guys like, don't ever write a new song. Don't do always it. play that all 100 wanted, times. All we want is the old stuff. Yeah. When you have 42 hits, just keep stick with those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we just got I want to see Jimmy in concert. All right. First one from me. All right. Netflix show, like they made on the PJ Tour, is being made on the Champions Tour. <laughs> Give me the three guys. They should feature for best entertainment value, following them around. Best entertainment value. I mean, you got to go Bernard just because he's, he's a robot? because he's a lot more funny than you think, but he's so dry and he he'd catch so many people off guard. And then you got to go Harrington because he's 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 kind of crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's been in here. He goes. Yeah, it's it, great. I mean, it's it, it's awesome. I mean, he just he's nonstop. That's pretty cool. And who's well, throw Doug Barron in there? Oh yeah, oh, wow. he's wild. There you go. Come on, double fist it. <laughs> I thought for sure we'd get a Miguel and How in there. Uh, Too many captions. That's it. I can't. It, yeah, I mean, I I want to go out to dinner with him really bad. I've told him this all the time, but I I I need the I need the caption. Yeah, I feel like yeah. Darren Clark would be a good hang. Ooh, Clark, you'd be a really good yeah. hang. He can go. Yeah, There's I mean, a those, lot of good ones on. But Champions. I mean, those those are the obvious ones. Yeah, that's you guys, true. you guys didn't want the obvious ones. That's you, fair. That's you wanted true. the ones that Mikey yeah, Allen. Oh, Mike Allen would be Saki. He was a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful <laughs> human being who <laughs> I mm-hmm. love. Would be a great one. Absolutely, we'd go to the Mesa. That, that would Mesa actually Skins be, game. Yeah, you perfect. might get a little more juice out of Champs Tour guys than you than you do on some of the PGA Tour guys. I think you get a lot more. Yeah. After you let's make that. It. After you let's make that. After we you all feed him a little that. juice. Yeah. Give him yeah. a little juice. <laughs> Even more full swing. That's what we'll call it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fuller. Fuller swing. <laughs> you always been a really straight driver of the golf ball. Are you a better driver of the golf ball or of a car? According to your wife, Carol, perhaps. <laughs> According to Carol, definitely the golf ball. According to me, definitely the car. Tell me about this Honda what? you had. I had a four door Honda Civic station wagon mm. that had two gears. It was a manual shifter, two gear, no clutch. <laughs> no clutch? It was I mean, it was incredible. And it had been through Mount St. Helens out at University of Montana with my brother. And you could open the hood and you could still have ash from Mount St. Helens underneath that hood. But uh it might have been nicknamed the Fear Mobile. Are you terrified? Are you wild? Kids with this are thing? you wild on the roads? I I think I terrified Nikki Stricker more than anybody else on the planet. I'm guessing that's where you might. That's have what it sounds from. sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> she had a hard time actually letting her her children in my car just because of high school days. Yeah. Yeah, she said uh, apparently <laughs> jam packed the kids in there and then just terrifying driver. We we did a. 12 in there one time and got stopped. 12. 12. 12. That's the four f- doors. That's that a was, nice feature to the Honda Civic. That was a clown car. I mean, Station we had wagon. everybody in there, and it was a lady policewoman who came up and she looked in and she's like, Have you been drinking? I'm like, No, ma'am. She's like, Get these people home. Yeah. What are you <laughs> I mean, doing? Just, Do you know you have an entire children's just, army in your just, car? Yeah. Just go. You have four seatbelts and 12 people. <laughs> those those were the good days where they actually uh, let you go thinking you do the right thing. <laughs> all right. That's Fair right. enough. Um, all right. You won Nike Tour Player of the Year in 1995. And the PJ Tour accidentally sent you Greg Norman's trophy <laughs> for PJ Tour Player of the Year. Looking back, if you knew then what you know now, would you have kept that thing and what could it be worth? That 
that's a nice piece to have. I, I current day. Totally thought about keeping it. I'm so, mean, I'm shocked you gave it back. No, I never got it. Send him another one. I I still don't know to this day. I can't remember if they called me first or I called them first. I'm not I'm not positive on that one. Hmm. I honestly I, I I remember a conversation with my family going. This is kind of cool. Yeah, kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, this, I mean, this look good on the mantle. Greg doesn't need this. Yeah. <laughs> Turn around the other way. Nobody sees Greg's name. Yeah, that was player of the year. <laughs> yeah. How'd you what know it? that? Huh? That's good. How'd I dig in. It was a good I one. I dig good. in. I'm. That, by the way, if you had solid. that right now, I'd be like Greg, I know that they're not talking to you right now. How bad you want this bad boy? Yeah, yes. That could be. Yes. That could be worth a lot. Yes, good man. Bad. Thank you. Thank you. Um. All right. You guys don't like one. I want to go. Don't like this one at all. It's very good. I'm not a fan of any of them. They just keep going down like this is this is the Bordeaux blend. Like water. Rindo, the Bordeaux blend. These are the ones you got at the players? These are good. No, this is uh we had Kenzo Winery into our players dinner. I have a different winery in every single year hmm. for our players dinner on Wednesday night in Tucson. Oh nice. It's is that your good. thing? Is wine like your thing? Are you wine a, and... like a car some guys are car guys, watch guys, whatever, shoe um, guys? I are you wine guy? I I was car and watches, but now I'm food and wine completely there's a place in you dallas watch. every year in byron nelson you always go to my friend's restaurant like a french pastry restaurant wine guys number rise one. there you go rise Bam. number one mm-hmm. i mean that is a straight up souffle capital of the world of uh, souffle sorry france souffle capital of the united states i'd call rise number one <laughs> sorry my friend, my friend <laughs> tara worked there and she's like do you know this golfer jerry kelly i was like yeah she goes he comes in here every night i mean yeah. I would I would get three of them. Yeah. And I'd sit there for I mean, three hours. So I'd I'd <laughs> I'd get a I'd get a kind of an appetizer one, then I'd get a really savory one, then I'd get a dessert one. And they're not small. So I I did well. Well, if you're in Dallas, go well check done. out Rise. Well Rise done. Rise number one. There you go. <laughs> um, all right. Have you ever took your phone out during a PJ tour around and filmed another player's shot? Yes. Can you describe it for us? Elaborate. Yeah, it was a shot out of the water. Uh, I mean, it was. Well, then this happened I, more. I than knew. Once. I knew this person was going to get absolutely splattered, and they didn't. So uh, there's nothing I could do with it. Well, this mm. happened twice. It wasn't as much fun because you did it to me at Beth Page. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> Where was that one? Seventeen at Beth Page. Me, you, and Harrison Fraser were all shooting a million on Friday. We we're like last group. That possible part three and none of us could believe how deep my ball buried under the lip of the bunker and i'm literally getting ready to dig in you're like hold on <laughs> and you pull your phone out, you're like i gotta get this on film real quick uh me and lady your caddy were talking about that this morning oh, that's so good yeah i do remember he's that like one. one of the funny stories is at your expense uh jerry made you wait so you could get his phone out to film you hit a bunker shot <laughs> that's when you know you're locked in that's, that's... called the zone don't yeah. hit yet. Let me get my phone. Great hole, the seventeenth at Beth, <laughs> Beth Page. I believe twelve percent of the field hit that green in regulation. It's great. That place that just hole. seems that like a impossible. beating. Yeah, just exactly. a pound. Just a. It, I mean, that just, place is no fun. Just smash, it smash. I mean, smash, a, smash. it was key to get it in the fairway, but the problem is, is that I couldn't reach the fairways yeah. on a couple of them. And at least the crowds are so nice and supportive around sweethearts. There. <laughs> they root <laughs> for Absolute you. Absolute sweethearts. Root for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm still, I'm still playing, so I can't. No, I get. They were fantastic. You guys up there in the Northeast are fantastic. I mean, love you. Love, there you love go. you. Oh, just keep it coming. Just yes. bring it all. Yes. Love it. Yeah, I love the way you do that. Got a career in politics after this. All right, here we go. On to your boy, Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, mm-hmm. you're a huge Packers fan. Friend of Aaron Rodgers. You played the AT&T with him, what, five years? Your partners? A one. decent amount of years. I think it's eight. Was it eight? I think it's eight. Yeah, I was, was thinking, it more? I was okay. thinking seven or eight. Seven. A number of years. Enough yeah. to develop a friendship. If it meant Aaron Rodgers would stay a Packer for life, would you be willing to go on one darkness retreat with him? Ooh. And uh, it's not the frog. It gets you a little ayahuasca, I mean, a little yeah. enlightenment, a little clarity. I think you could be into something like that. I'd I'd green, like green and gold forever for A-Rod? I would definitely go on a ayahuasca retreat. You don't but, care if Aaron I mean, plays no. for the Packers? You can go wherever you want, Aaron. I'll still go. Uh, call me. I'll go with you. Aaron, you, you play wherever you want, but... Can I go on a retreat with you? You know what? It just happens me and Colt know a guy. Yes. We just yeah. in here. We just had a guy. That we're going to get up. you the frog. <laughs> DJ Trahan is kinds of all shit. in on this stuff nowadays. I, 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 why does that not surprise me? Do you want to hear a crazy, ironic 
coincidental thing that I read today. I did not know this. Right before Aaron Rodgers played, I think it was his second year when you started to get paired up with him. His first year, guess who he was paired with? Try him, DJ. Yep. Yeah. That might have been when this all launched. And now they're a little <laughs> ayahuasca. They're all sense. little I- ayahuasca brothers now. Side, side question, Aaron Rodgers also hurt you at Pebble Beach. That was that was awesome. I mean, that was <laughs> that was awesome. Talk that was me. that was pride. It was total pride. Talk to me. So, I mean, I'm catching a thirty to forty yard pass from Aaron Rodgers as I'm sprinting down the fairway on eighteen at Pebble Beach. I mean, how beautiful is that? And the way that he throws a ball, which I Never really realized. I've played catch with him a bunch, and I've never seen a ball. Well, just be able to maneuver the point any way you want to maneuver the point. I mean, if I if I throw a high ball, it just flutters on the way down. But his spin just, I mean, it turns that point down, and he drops that point. Wherever he wants to drop the point. If he wants to drop it 30 yards out, he'll drop it 30 yards out. If he wants to drop it 10 yards out, he'll drop it 10 yards out. It's like a great curveball throwing pitcher. He knows when that thing's going to break and where it's going to break because of the speed. I I mean, I I saw it coming. It was, it was right here. And then all of a sudden, it just went straight down. And I reached and I fingertipped this thing right at the bottom. And I squeezed it so hard with my fingertips that I popped the tendon in my finger right here. Definitely worth it. And my finger looked like this. I mean, it was... It was bent. It was no lie. It was It was, it was the middle guy? Yeah, it was completely on the right. shocked like this. Now, I didn't let on to him, but I could feel it. It just popped. Mm-hmm. And I could feel it. And he needs to eagle. Birdie for an eagle to make the cut. I think that's the closest we came. <laughs> well, this uh, year he uh, ran away from the field. Yeah, he did. We'll get to that one. But he, <laughs> <laughs> but, but he topped it in the water with his three wood, trying to hit this cut over the water. Which he, I mean, he goes for those hero shots, which is awesome. I love it. And now I've got my second shot. Now I know I have to make eagle, and I'm like. Hey, look. <laughs> look, my finger's borderline he, broken. He wasn't really happy at that point, but, uh, I mean, his caddy was over there with me, and we were looking at him. <laughs> just like, but I just grabbed the club like this, and I'm, I'm glad it wasn't bent the other way. I'm glad it was bent this way, and I knocked it up there and just got it to the front edge, which I didn't have the firepower to do it. But, uh, no, he he definitely hurt me. And, I mean, that thing, it's still <laughs> numb to this day. Damn it, Aaron. I can't feel the top of it, but... Definitely worth I it would, to lose feeling oh in your God, finger I'd, to catch I'd, one. I'd catch passes all day. Now, the funny thing is my wife always wanted to catch a pass from Aaron Rodgers, but not just any pass. Like, I want you to throw it as hard as you can. Oh, no. Him. No, uh-huh. no, you're dead. No, Carol. Your face and he's is gone. like, no, I won't. So she she actually put the uniform, she put the helmet on, she put everything. He still wouldn't do it. And now I understand why. Yeah. Because yeah. that was just dropping at the bottom of its arc and on a nothing little casual I, on a nothing, on the 18th I squeezed it enough to, to pop that thing so tay yeah i know what you've been going through all <laughs> right now that we got that story story yeah. where's he going you want, you want to break news on subpar here i is he wearing green i i, I by the time when this comes out i'm pretty yeah, every, the world will know I will, every time this comes out it's I, coming I, out tomorrow i i would he's definitely gonna be wearing green there you go. There you go. Place your I, bets accordingly. I just want him to. I just want him to play. Dude loves the game. Mm-hmm. He loves the game. And sometimes when you get all this stuff going on with teams and ownerships and all that kind of stuff, you kind of lose that, lose sight of that part of it. And uh, that's. I. I just want him to come back to to loving the game. I don't. I don't care where he plays. I really don't. I care. The individual, and that he finds that love again, because I know he does. Of course, I mean you you don't, you don't play like that without loving it. So. He loves his golf too. Oh. He's tuned in every week. But what'd you think of that handicap at Pebble this year? I think he's it's, improved. I think it's <laughs> totally fine. I think it's uh, I. I think that's a lot closer to his handicap. I. I think a a 
two handicap or something like that is a more of a vanity handicap type situation. I I think he's plus you put him on a PGA Tour event uh, where he's been playing football all year. I mean, you got to give him a little chance on that. You know, right, we'll allow it. They don't give Larry, anybody their their set handicaps. Larry won. Larry two gets years dragged for his handicap and like. We play with like well, that's real. That's dude. His he can handicap. blow it off the world. Yeah, but he just hits iron at Pebble Beach every time. So now he doesn't have the the retees and stuff. He's going to play good. Exactly. It's a real handicap. And I'm telling you, that's Aaron. I I do not feel bad about him doing that. I know they ham and egged it like crazy. I mm -hmm. I want it uh, with Bob Holmy Jr. and his handicap was not out of line. In any way, shape, or form, we ham and egged it so perfectly and so great. But it was the first year of the the gin or the gin handicap. I don't even know how to say it because I don't know what a handicap is. Again, <laughs> call it the gin from the now. Gin. Again, <laughs> it is gin, isn't it? It's yeah, it's gin. But yeah, who gives that's, that's gold jacket, jacket, green, green this jacket. Is gin. Who gives I agree. Shit? Yeah, that's gin. It's much more fun. That's gin. gin. So, uh, I mean. It came out because he had one good round, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden he had a low handicap. And because it's Aaron Rodgers, and and you want him to come back, and if it's, it's winning, he's coming back. Yeah, it's so just not. The, it's just not the way it is. Yeah, everyone it, relaxes. Everything's the fine. It's not. It didn't get paid. Handicap it's just a little was fuzzy. Totally fine. throwing balls in the fairways, breaking Handi fingers. It's what the it's handicap about. system sucks. Yes, it does. Um, all right, next one. We know you love your golf, love your hockey, red wine, souffles, all that. You got one day left. On this wonderful earth, you got to pick one. You got to either go hunting or you got to go fishing. Which one's it going to be? Mm. Ooh. I know you're big fans, both of them. You know, the, the funny thing is, is, is Strix tried, he's tried to get me hunting a lot. And I'm like, Strix, you want to put me up in a tree? I mean, I am going to be do, doing something that smells. I am going to be loud. I am be I am impatient. I am going to be moving around. He's like, yeah, you're not coming hunting with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when it comes to fishing, I live on a lake in Madison, Wisconsin. Yet I am the wake surfing boat that swamps the fishermen. Gotcha. Uh, I love catching. Love catching. Don't really like fishing. <laughs> catching, I'm, I'm good. We've got a walleye hole. About 20, 30 yards off our pier. A lot of the pros hear that thing right in the morning, 5.30 in the morning. Uh, I I love trolling some lines off the pier, but uh, I I would have to say neither and put me on a, a wake surfing okay. board, put me put me surfing on that lake, and I'll, I'll figure out how to kill something if you want me to, a fish or okay. uh, whatever. I'm, I'm with you. I'm not a big hunter, hunter or fisherman. Yeah, I, I love Under watching the, the dogs. Believe it or work. not, love watching the dogs work and duck hunting. Though that's pretty. You're cool. just not a sit still guy. No, can't yeah. do I'm it. gonna be doing something to smell. <laughs> <laughs> that's when I was like, I get it. I get it. Yeah, I get it. Uh, all, right. all right, we haven't even talked about your hockey days. I was wanting to go back to your hockey days a little bit, but I'm gonna give you a little taste right here. Okay, who's the last guy on the Champions Tour you would want to drop gloves with? Oh, I'd, I'd definitely be Derek Clark. Oh, really? Derek, you tell you, I had a bet. I had, yeah, I thought it he'd was Ernie. be, he'd be Ernie. Yeah, big er, boy, dude. Already, already kind of done that with him a little bit. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> there, are, there are Did ways. You oh, we've wrestled. He and loves that. Wrestle, I mean, oh, he? yeah, he does What's love that. Deal with that? He and loves now it. we fight. Great. <laughs> <laughs> After the seventeenth. No, period. that's uh, that's great. He's a he's a big teddy bear, but Derek Clark. I don't think there's a way that I could actually get him down. Ernie's tall enough you could topple him in some way and get him on the ground. It'd still be hard down there, but be easier. But Darren, it it I don't think it would matter. It, it'd just be the mass. Yeah, you might not be able to yeah get that, to him. I, I don't think I can. I ever like that. That's I great. can't. I can't get around him. I can't do anything. It'd be tough. Pull his man bun. That's that's about it. Yeah, he's got that man bun now. He's vulnerable in the back. Yeah, I think that would pull just that piss cashmere him off over his head and grab the bun. <laughs> All right, last uh, DC, question. I didn't think that would be. I didn't, that surprised me a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Last question: 
better chance of getting fined by the PGA Tour for conduct unbecoming? Your man Steve Stricker or Peter Malnati? Wow. <laughs> or wow. Jesus Christ himself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you might as well put the third in there. No, definitely Strick. Definitely Strick. Because Strick has, has got such a burn that I don't think people really realize what he brings up from inside. Hey, there's a reason that he cries at the end of all these things. It's not because it means that much to him. It's because he's releasing everything that he is, he is kept in. He is, he is extremely competitive. Uh, I mean, yeah. It, but he it bottles it so well. I could never see him going on like a tirade, club slam, F bomb, all that. Like, even though he might want to, and internally, I know like he's competitive. Just, well, neither, neither happen. one of them, neither one of them will. But yeah. Steve has just that much more of a burn that if it's going to be one of those two, Steve, it, it would definitely be Steve, like just it. because of oh, it wants it. To me, it's a beautiful thing to see, and being a partner with him in the shark shootout and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I loved watching that because. It, it just gave me that glimpse inside of what he's really about. And uh, he is he is a pure competitor, man. All right, it Peter, is. prove him wrong. Do something cool. Peter, and blow up. Yeah, and blow go up. Crazy. Freak out. <laughs> Say shoot. That's coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gosh darn it. Ah! Yeah. That's 10 grand. I love it. Well, Jerry, man, this has been awesome. <laughs> yeah, to dude. everybody out there, go get screened. Yes. Color Guard, you are doing awesome work over there. Really appreciate you coming on with us. No, thank, and thank you guys for bringing light to that, too. I appreciate it. You got it. And, and call me about the darkness retreat. I get, we'll exchange info. That's the deal. We'll get dark. Jerry That's Kelly, everybody. All right. That was Jerry Kelly on Golf Subpar. Fun one with him. Got a little buzzed at the end of it with off his wine. I loved it, though. Really appreciate him bringing that in. But, man, what a warrior this guy is. He's been out there for so long, making the cut at the Players' Championship at his age. Um, you know, won several times on the PJ Tour, played alongside, alongside Tiger all those years. Uh, filmed me because my lie was so shitty at Beth Page during yes, the round. That's that, that always fun. Special. Mm -hmm. Loved that. Getting uh, Norman's trophy. I thought that was a spectacular story, which I wasn't even aware of before we started the interview until we started digging in. That's something. Maybe hold on to that one. 235,000. That's a car. Might he, got me a, he got me a little excited talking about Tiger on the Champions Tour. Uh, very much. So. I feel like the narrative's kind of changed on that a little bit. If you rewind a handful of years, I think you and I would have both agreed. But yeah, I don't know if Tiger's a Champions Tour guy, you know, created his legacy. Maybe pops in for some majors here and there, but it seems like the more guys we talk to now, the more they're saying he might be out there more than we think. All right. Well, that was a lot of fun with Jerry Kelly. It's now time to make some money. RBC Heritage Week, one of the best weeks on the PGA Tour. Uh, golf course that I absolutely love. It's so different. Most importantly, it's short. So I, tend, I had a few good weeks here. Uh -huh. um, but let's tee it up on FanDuel this PGA Tour season. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. All right, RBC Heritage. Strong field, designated event. A lot of great players. Roy McIlroy actually withdrew. So sad for the people here at Hilton Head that he's not teeing it up. But for my favorite, he played extremely well Sunday. He loves this place. He's the defending champion. He's going off at 18 to 1. Give me Jordan Spieth. Oh, okay. I like that. The kid's making some tweets right now. I'll tell you that. Uh, he's going to peel one off here very, very soon because he's been playing some good golf, making a lot of tweets. Let me find my odds here on my favorite because I just wrote them down. All right, I'm going off right here. I feel like this guy's going to be chalky. He's the fifth betting favorite this week, but I feel like he's going to get a lot more love than that. Colin Morikawa, this place just screams Colin Morikawa to me. He's one of the best iron players, if not the best iron player in the world. Coming off a top 10 at the Masters, T7 here last year. Give me Colin to get it done in the designated event. Back to back. By the way, it's hard to kind of ramp up and stay hot you know, lock in for from a major and then a designated event the week after. But Colin's got it in him. Yeah, but these guys, they get excited here. You know, a lot of people bring their family here. It, it's a vacation week. The golf course, everybody loves it. Um, no, I think I think they're going to be rocking and ready to go come Thursday um, for my dark horse. I've picked him recently a couple times. I think I just think at some point it's going to click and he's going to get it done. He's never won on the PGA Tour. He's going off at mm -hmm. 55 to one. Not sure as. Course history here at Harbortown, but I don't care. I Whatever. like him. Tommy Fleetwood. 
Ooh, fairway Jesus, come on down. All right, I like that. Yeah, you have been running hot on Tommy Fleetwood lately. Uh, I'm going to go with the guy that's the exact same odds, Colt. 55 to 1. I believe you picked him earlier in the year. I feel like his time's coming. He's got one finish outside the top 15 in his last six starts. He's rested after last week. His time is coming soon. Why not now? Ricky Fowler. Come on. Come on, Rick. Come on, he'll, Rick. He would look good it's in time. that tartan jacket. It's time. Yeah, add that to the wardrobe. All right. Well, you jacket can, season. You can bet these guys to win, top 20, head-to-head -head matchups, whatever you want. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the golf action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options and props, including top 20s, 10s, 30s, hole-in-one props, matchups, and more. And when you win, you get paid instantly. So aim for some green and bet on the PGA Tour. Go to FanDuel.com slash subpar and sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash subpar to get $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. FanDuel, official betting operator of the PGA Tour. Must be 21 years and older and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Hope is here. Gambling help? Helpline ma.org or call 800-327-5050. For 24-7 support in Massachusetts, call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. That's 467-369 in New York. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, or Virginia. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. How about it? How about all it? What right. a week, PG. Tip of the cap to you down there in Augusta. You left it all in the field. I left it all in the field. I've actually left some here in Scottsdale as well since I got home, but it's been a been a hell of a run and a great start to the major championship season. Well, it's time for a little rest, and then we'll get going here at RBC Heritage. But as always, a lot of fun. Love you guys. We'll talk to you all soon on Golf Subpar.